If you're not getting up to the no volleys online every single time after you return serve, it's costing you points and likely costing you the game. This is one of those rare areas in pickleball where there's simply no room for debate. After you hit your return of serve, you have to make it up to the no volleys online. In this video, I'm gonna show you why. Let's get into it. Hit the subscribe and notification bell below. You'll be the first to know you'll, uh, in your group and you'll be able to adopt our strategies and get them into your game before your friends do. So we'll look at some specific examples here on the board in a second about what happens when you don't get up to the line and, and how the, the point can, can basically develop after that uh, and how you as the returner are giving up an advantage and ceding that advantage to the uh, serving team uh, and, and that can cause you to lose points over a game and ultimately lose the game. But before we get into the, the specific examples of, of the negatives from not moving up, we need to look at the rules of pickleball because the rules of pickleball are what drive the advantage given to the return team at the beginning of the point. So once we have an understanding of the rules, then we'll come back here and we'll look at the uh, at some specific examples of the negatives of not moving up to the line. We're going to turn to Encore Tony for a minute to talk about the rules, then we'll come back here and we'll look at some specific examples. The rules of pickleball give the return team a distinct advantage in the point. Because of the two bounce rule where the service team has to stay back and wait for the ball to bounce, that allows the return team to come up to the line, take control of the no volley zone line, and keep, hopefully keep the serving team back. It is that rule that counterbalances the serving team's ability to score. Think of pick, a pickleball game as basically kind of a, a ballet or a dance between two sides. One side, the serving side can score. The other side has better defense or is allowed to set up a better defensive uh, position at the beginning of the point. If, if, if you as the return team don't manage to grasp that positional advantage given to you by the rules, then you concede that to the serving team. And the serving team already has an advantage, which is that they can score points. So what you're doing is you're compounding the advantage that they have by giving up the line to them, allowing them not only to potentially win the exchange or win that point, but also to score a point. And that's a really critical error that a lot of players commit. As the return team, your job is to lock down the no volley zone. You have to capitalize on your advantage given to you by the pickleball rules, move, make sure you move up, take over the no volley zone line, lock down the no volley zone, and control the front of the court, and make sure you keep the other team back. That's how you maintain your advantage as the return team. The first step in that process is for you as the returner to make sure that you're getting from the back of the court or the baseline of the court all the way up to the no volley zone line. You can think of pickleball as a, as a contest between who can, who can maintain their advantage or who can take advantage of, of their side better. The return team's advantage is the positional advantage to hopefully win the exchange at that time. The serving team's advantage is that they can score a point. If they're successful, whatever happens in, in the exchange there, they get to actually score a point. So if you think of a pickleball game from beginning to end, it's which side does a better job of capitalizing on that advantage that's given to them by the rules. What we've been focusing on in this video is we're focusing on the return team's advantage, the advantage given to the return team by the rules. And basically what we're doing is we're, we're, we're looking at how do we make sure that when we're playing on the return side that we capitalize on that advantage to make sure that we don't give it up to the serving team and, and unbalance the game. Before we get into specific examples, let me, let me tie the, the rules discussion we had a, a few minutes ago into the board here. So basically, when we start the point, obviously this player is going to serve here. This player will return. We like the returns to go there, so I'm going to put the, uh, the ball there. As soon as that return is hit there, then this player should move up to the Nobali zone line. And this is really how the, then the, the, the point will be played. So this is once you, once you begin the point, this is how the point should be framed, basically. You're going to have... You're going to have your serve, you're going to have your return, and then the action really happens here. In other words, the action really starts from this point on in a pickleball point. The serve and the return really just kind of set the stage. So you had your serve, you had your return, it set the stage for the point. Now this player has moved up from the return to here. This is really where the action happens uh, in the, uh, you know, at the beginning of the pickleball point or in a pickleball point. So now what happens is this team, uh, this team, as we talked about a minute ago, has a positional disadvantage. This team... This player is already in position before the serves even, even hit. As soon as this ball leaves, so this ball is traveling. As this ball is traveling, this player turns into an offensive player and moves up here, ideally, before this ball starts to come back. So this ball comes here. This player is now here. 
that's how that's how the the point is supposed to be played. In other words, the, the, the rules of pickleball create a situation where this is how the point should look at the beginning of every single point after the serve and after the return. The return should be somewhere in here, and the two players on the return team should be here. These two players now need to work to get from here, to work their way from here to here, essentially to neutralize the advantage given to these players, come up to the no-volley zone, and hopefully play an even point. It, from this scenario, if I have two teams that are evenly matched, and that's really important, so basically this team and this team are virtually identical in terms of their skill set, and I don't have any like double-blind studies or anything like that to uh, you know to, to back up these numbers. These are numbers based on just being a student of the game and also having played for four years, uh, a little more than four years. This team here, if they're evenly matched, at this point in the point, in other words, after the return is hit and the ball has landed, this, this team up here should win 70 to 80 percent of the points, not because they're better players than these players, simply because they're here and they're here. In fact, if you look at these players, obviously they're, they're indistinguishable. They're, they're just, they're just you know, uh, uh, depictions of men and women. So if I took this player and put him here and this player here, whatever, however you want to organize these players, if they're, if they're evenly skilled, then just because these players are standing here, they have an advantage in the point, which I ascribe a 70 to 80% chance that this team should win the point. For purposes, our purposes in, uh, here, we're gonna use 75%, just because it's an easier number to, to work with, meaning that out of every four points, this, this team should win three, and this team should win one. This team, meaning the serving team, should win one, and this team should win three. What you want to do is you want to make sure that when you're playing pickleball that you are maintaining this edge that you have. You don't want to give this advantage up to this team, uh, to the serving team, and you want to make sure you protect that advantage as the return team by taking the positional advantage given to you by the rules that we talked about and making sure you're up here at the no volley zone line. If you start giving up the advantage, so say that, that you're not, uh, th this uh, gentleman, instead of coming up to the Novali zone line, was staying back or moving halfway or something like that, not getting up to the Novali zone line before this team could make its way up to the Novali zone line to play the point. If, that, if that's happening, then this per these percentages change. So instead of being 70-80% uh, favorite, let's say this team now becomes a 60% a favorite, right? So you go from 75 to 60, make it bigger here so you can see it, 75 down to 60%, it's not a very good six, there you go, 75 to 60%, uh, you know, you're, you're giving up 15%, a 15% edge in a match. If this team plays properly, in other words, this team doesn't give you this sort of advantage, so this team preserves its 75% advantage, because remember, sometimes you'll be the server, right, and this team will be the return team, so if this team is playing properly and maintaining its percentage and you're giving up, you're getting down to 60% and you're evenly matched, this team will invariably lose every single game against this team. Right, let's look at a couple of examples, specific examples of uh, what happens when, you, when this player does not make it up to the no volley zone line uh, before the third shot is hit or before he has to hit the fourth shot. Is, is a better way of thinking of it. So let's go serve and return again, right? So serve, return. And let's assume, let's take the most extreme example, which is that this player doesn't come in at all. And that happens. There are players that just don't come in at all. So here what happens is, this is the easiest scenario for this, this team. All this team has to do is this player, let's say this player comes, hits this ball, right? All this team has to do is hit, and it doesn't even have to be a great shot. It can be just an, a loopy ball here, right? Land it there. Now this team moves in. This team, you know, basically moves up to the no volley zone. And I'm putting them like this so you can see their feet are outside the no volley zone. So they come up like this. And, and what happens? Now this player is back on an island. This player is up here on an island. So each player is on their, in their own little island there. Uh, and now these two players have locked down the no volley zone. So n n this player now has to play a doesn't have a lot of choices. This player has to play some sort of a third shot now, like basically the, the, the traditional uh, serving third shot. So it has to hit a dink into the kitchen zone uh, or 
has to somehow overcome the position of these players, it's very difficult to do. So now what's happened is this team has taken the advantage, and I would say that they actually have a better than um, 70% or 75%, as I said earlier, because of the fact that these this, this team is disjointed. No, this team is, is broken apart. So what happens is if, if a high ball comes, so say this player hits a high ball, it can be attacked. If this player is up, then this team attacks this player to win the point. If this, if this player hits a low ball, in other words, a ball that cannot be attacked, uh, but stays back, then all this team has to do is punch Valley back here again. So there's just there's there's a there's an inconsistency in this team in terms of what they're able to do. There's a spot where I can go safe and a spot that I can go hard, uh, which is you never want to give that to the other team. So th by this player staying back, it allows this play this team to come up easily just by hitting any kind of a ball into this area here, keeping it away from this player, coming up, taking over the no volley zone, and with the advantage, now able to score a point. All right, let's talk about, let's look at a situation where now this player, instead of coming uh, or staying all the way back, comes like a halfway or, or there's some players that come, you know, and basically stay around here. And so let's go. So we got the serve and we got the return, right? So this player starts to come in and comes to there. Okay. Now that's not as bad as, as staying back, obviously, but it still, it still it does a couple of things. One, it provides these players with more room to work. So these players, if they know what they're doing, what these players are going to do is they're going to hit their third shot here. Because what happens now is I don't have to hit as great of a third shot if this player is off of the line. If I try and hit a third shot to this player, and let's put this player up on the line. So if this player is up on the line, I have very little room to work with to hit that third shot in. This player being off the line, I can hit it here uh, and not, not have a problem. So I can let it float a little bit. And if I happen to get it at their feet right? Because their feet now are available to me. If I can get the ball into their feet as I'm moving forward, right? Now I'm putting pressure on this player. And now the, the, the tables are turned where this player is basically playing a defensive position. These players are moving forward and this player is in trouble. Sort of related to the uh, concept of, um, of the easier uh, third shot is, the, is you also allow this team to do more things with the, more, to execute different types of shots as well. What happens is if you come in, if you leave this kind of space here and you have a team that, can, that has some tennis background or any kind of, you know, just can hit a, a, a drive, they don't have to hit a blistering awesome drive because you're not next, you're not on the no volley zone line or not on the line yet. So these players here, for instance, can try and attack you by hitting not traditional third shots that have to have arc so they can drop into the kitchen. Now they can hit drives that can, like, they can attack these angles that are open. Uh, you know, this player can attack an angle in here. And it just creates a lot of pressure on this player because this player has not made it up to the no volley zone line. So a question then would be if if I if I can't you know I'm having trouble making it up to the no volley zone line a question then would be how can this player make sure that he has enough time to make it up here the easiest way to handle that is by increasing the arc on your return of serve uh, by increasing the arc so instead of hitting instead of this player hitting a line drive so a lot of times uh, particularly young players players with tennis backgrounds and stuff like that like to hit blistering returns of serve they uh, seem to think that hitting a hard return of serve is somehow going to give them an advantage. It actually, you, a lot of times it backfires unless you're really good or, and really fast. It ends up backfiring because A, you're putting too much pressure on your return. And you know that's, that's a subject for another video in, in terms of the margin of error. But the, the issue that we want to deal with is time. 
if I hit this ball really hard, right, and then it, it gets here fast, and I'm moving, and I'm playing a team that can likewise hit fast, they're going to hit it back fast, and I'm going to get stuck somewhere around there. And so I won't be able to make it up here. Now, if I take that same same return, or not the same return, but I take my return, and I hit it higher, so I hit basically like a, a loopy shot. As that ball travels, it, not only will I buy time because they're going higher, it's also generally slower. So the ball will be taking longer to get here, it'll bounce, and then it'll usually sit up some so that I can be all the way up here before they, be, sometimes before they even hit the ball, which would be perfect. Uh, and I, I tell uh, students and people I work with that if you need to hit a moon ball, hit a moon ball. It doesn't matter. In other words, if you need to hit that return or serve, if you need to hit that return or serve all the way up here, and so it comes back down and you have time to get up here, it doesn't matter. The important thing is not how hard you hit it and things like that. The important thing is, is that your return or serve is relatively deep on the court and that you're here before you have to hit the next ball. Another thing that can happen sometimes is that you are not quite at the no volley zone line when, you, when you're hitting your four shot. What happens there is, again, we'll go to the serve, we'll go to the return. Now here's what happens. What happens is this player is moving, right, as the ball is coming. And so what happens is, if this player is moving as the ball is, com as the ball is coming towards him, it makes for a harder shot than if he's already here before the ball is coming towards him. So anytime you're moving and trying to hit the ball is harder than if you're static or already at the position as the ball is coming towards you. So that's another thing you want to keep in mind too, is that you can also have errors in your next shot, in your fourth shot, if you're moving up and you're not here while the ball is traveling towards you. So that's a really important concept as well and why you want to give yourself more time to get up to the no volley zone line. If you made it all this far in the video, I'm going to share with you a secret, which is that playing well as a return team is way more important than playing well as a serve team. If I can play well as a return team, I can block this team from scoring points. Eventually, I will score points. Even if I'm not particularly good at third shots or I'm not particularly good at, at you know, moving up to the, the, knowing how to move up to the service line in time and things like that, just by attrition, I will eventually score points. What will happen, let me give you an example. Let's, let's say that we start playing a game, and so these guys start serving. I'm, I'm a, a, a killer uh, return team. I'm just, I, it's, you're going to be hard-pressed to score points. Gonna be, that's how good I am at keeping you back and then winning points uh, or preventing you from coming in and preventing you from basically making it a 50-50 uh, uh, match. So what happens is the first, the first serve, you're going to score zero. Now we're sided out. I'm not going to move the, the ball back and forth. And then let's say I, I score zero because I'm not particularly good on the server side, right? And then the ball comes back to them and they score zero. And I score zero. And they score zero. And I score zero. And they score zero. And now maybe I snuck one in. Maybe they missed a return or serve. Or they gave me a, a, you know, a ball that I could drive or something. So I snuck a point in. Great. And then, and then now they scored zero. And I scored zero. And they scored one because you know they can score a point once in a while. I'm not I'm not uh, invincible. And then I score zero, and they score zero, and then I score one, and they score zero, and then I score zero, and they score one, and then I score two maybe, and then they score zero, I score zero, they score zero, I score one. Now, this game, you know, it's going to take a long time to play, right? But if you can see here, if I, if I play really good on the return side, I can hold my opponents to a zero and a zero and a zero and a zero and a zero again and again and again, then I can sneak a point here, I can sneak a point here, maybe I get lucky, get a couple points there, and then I get a point there. So at this point of the match, right, I have five points and they have two points, okay? So I, I, it's a game that's gonna take a long time, 
but I'm not in a rush, right? I'm, I'm just, I just want to get to 11 before they get to 11. If I play the return side, if I lock down the return side really, really well, then this team cannot score points. And I can score points whenever I can you know, scrape one by. Uh, I can score a point and get to 11 before they get to 11. That's why the return side is way more important to, to know how to play than the serve side. If you take one thing from this video, it's the importance of making sure that you have you and your partner up at the no buy zone line before this four shot comes over and you have to handle it. You want to make sure that you're up here so that you lock down the advantage given to you by the rules and make sure that you don't give up your advantage to this team that already has the advantage of being able to score a point. Good luck out there.